All right, I'm starting to sand and hopefully this shows up so you can clearly see a line right here where it's unsanded when I sanded that and that and that was just going over it really lightly with the 320 and if I put paint on the car glossy finish you'll see that line now this is where the molding goes so it's not that important but I still don't want it to show so I'm going to sand that until I either don't see that and if I go through metal here and here and that still shows and I will just uh spray some more primer on it and then sand it some more and that'll fill that in so it doesn't show. Now that line is no longer visible but you can see a little uh, you know where I went through the primer there a little bit but that I'm not too concerned about because I am going to seal a, a primer before I paint so that will bond to the, what's here and seal anything from telegraphing through if there's any you know incompatible stuff. This is the time consuming part. I just go around and kind of sand it out. Any of the scratches or any imperfections should uh, be covered by doing this hopefully. So let me just kind of show you what I do here. So see here, I got a little light spot right there. So there's obviously an impression there and you can see little marks from where it was ground in the past and when I sand this out, hopefully none of that will show, hopefully that won't show too. If it does, I'll just reshoot some primer and re-sand it. It's no big deal, uh, this primer. I can just spot in it. It's no big deal. It's just a real easy to use stuff. It's lacquer base. Dries as fast as it comes out of the gun. But that just kind of gives you the a picture of what I do to, you know, so you don't see things like that. I mean, all these little, I don't know if they show up or not, all these little marks from grinders. That stuff will show up in your paint if, if they're visible sanded in the primer they'll show up in the paint so it's all blacked out and there's three places right here it's not totally sanded right there and there was one other spot right here so i'm going to just shoot some of the gray sandable primer on those spots it's not worth repriming the whole trunk lid for those three little spots Four spots needed a little more. Give them a sand in a couple hours. I think this is going to be good. You can see, um, all right, so that was the little bit of spot that was unsanded there, which is sanded now. And the same with there. But these spots were larger here, and you can see where I went through back into the red oxide, but the uh, gray sanded, but notice that the gray around here too. And notice how it's sanded off there, there, in these spots. Well, underneath, that's where the braces are. So I suspect, you know, this brace is about that wide, about that wide, about that wide. I suspect somebody had set something heavy on the trunk lid for years that kind of pushed the sheet metal down and caused that but it feels good I think it'll look fine I mean it's going to be probably better than what it was at the factory and uh, you know I, I could prime it and sand it more but I think it'd just be a waste of time it actually feels really good the key with sanding the, with blocking this out is just kind of I just let the thing just sit on there and just move it with my hand like so. If you push down on it, you actually flex the sheet metal and you don't want to do that. You want the sheet metal to stay as flat as possible. There's one little right there, but that's not enough to... I think that was some... I'll, I'll sand that area with the block some more, but I don't think that needs anything more. I think it'll look fine. 
I gave that little spot another quick sand out. With the block and just a few little pits. But I think that'll be fine. I think the sealer will fill that. The sealer is, is going to, you know, take care of any bare or any, you know, so I don't need to reshoot it with primer. The primer is mainly for sanding out and, you know, looking for your little spots like this. I just spent about maybe two hours blocking that out and retouching and I had lunch while the primer dried. I didn't count the dry time in my uh, project here, so maybe another hour and a half for that dry time. The rear quarter panels are all blocked out and I want to try and keep the dust down so as I've been sanding I've been kind of just working the sanding dust down to the end here and wiping it off. And the sides I've been wiping off too as I go. When I'm all done cleaning up all this like this, I'll get the air hose and blow everything out. I'm going to wipe the sides down too. You can see a little bit on the floor. I'm going to clean that up. Actually, I'm just going to take the cardboard outside and blow it off with compressed air. And uh, then I'll blow everything off here and remask the edges. And it should be ready to shoot some paint on. It uh, sanded out pretty well. I blew the car off with compressed air and I blew this this out on both sides so I had to cut a hole to get back in there to tape it back in. I untaped this edge and I like to just take usually a little longer thumbnail and you just kind of peel the tape back. I've already done it here. And that way, you know, I untaped that was sticking up above. And that way you get a little bit of the green showing here and you don't have a, a sharp edge here. And it just comes out a lot nicer looking. So I like to you know, just make sure the tape is peeled back a little. I still got to wipe it down with wax and grease remover. And I still need to um, tack it before paint. You can see sanding dust right there that was stuck under that bit of tape. But we'll get it all cleaned out and wiped down and it's, you know, really ready for paint. So I'm going to just go around and, and finish fixing where I blew the, the masking tape off, blew things apart, and retape. I knocked that silly back here and tore it, you know, right here. And it's important that you have all that tape so, you know, you get overspray underneath there. And that stuff just floats around and sticks to everything. Um, the primer isn't so bad because that stuff dries as quick as it's coming out of the gun. It seems like, you know, it's just dry dust in the air when it's, uh, when you're done spraying. And I always, whoops, sorry. Sorry about that. I stepped on the blow gun there and then the air compressor kicked on. But anyway, I always blow the overspray off the plastic when I use it to mass because it does paint doesn't won't stick to this and it'll come if you hit it with your spray gun accidentally it'll blow little flakes off so either replace your plastic or clean the overspray off you know that's that's not going anywhere there but the you know when it was as thick as that it just came off in chunks so I always blow everything off the plastic whole car and uh, unless you're you know otherwise you replace your plastic and these are like the little flex right here that it, you know float around everywhere so you got to make sure that it's all clean and I'll, I'll uh, blow this off some more before I wipe it down I'll give everything a final clean off um, I don't know if I'm going to paint today or not. It's kind of windy out and there's a lot of little flowers in the air. And I do have to ventilate the garage. So, you know, I don't want stuff in it. I was trying to get the get the car done before um, there's another one. So you got to get all those out of here.
and I'll tack it before I paint it, but I gotta, I'll blow it off a little bit more after I'm done, uh, you know, redoing all the tape everywhere where it needs to be redone. It's all blocked and wiped down and ready to spray. And I would spray it today. It's actually halfway decent day other than it's just blowing a gale out. It's windier than can be. And I need to ventilate the garage. So opening this door, I had it open and my neighbor's got a spruce tree right there. And those needles blow in this door. I had needles all over the floor here. I had them everywhere and they're going to end up in the paint. Even if I leave the overhead door down, I'm still going to have to open this door and the back door and maybe a window with a fan in it. And I can't have stuff blowing in the paint from outside. In fact, I'm going to keep the door closed so I don't get more needles in here because then I have to clean them out again. And I don't want to have to... I don't want any dust stirred up when I go to paint. So I, don't want, I, wanted to, I blew the garage out really good today. Cleaned everything up, got all the flakes off the plastic, retaped everything that needed to be taped. All this tape is peeled back enough so I don't get a sharp edge. Um, I had to, I don't know if I showed this in the video or not, but I had to cut holes to re stick this because when I blew it off, I blew those in. And, uh, you know, I'm blowing on 125. PSI of air to blow it off and I'm spraying with 25 PSI so yeah it's not going to be a um, blowing stuff everywhere when I'm painting but that and the trunk lid are both wiped down and ready to spray so I'm going to spray them I'd rather paint on a cooler day than on a windy day because I can wait a little longer between coats of paint you know to let it tack up but if I get spruce needles or something blowing into the paint or dirt or dust from high wind stir and everything up and there's flowery things blowing around, yeah, that stuff will stick in the paint and make a mess. So I don't want to paint. Windy days are the least favorite days to paint on. And uh, like I said, I'd rather paint on a cooler day. Now it's supposed to snow tomorrow or tomorrow and Saturday. We're talking about snow but we'll see what the you know they're talking today was supposed to be really cold and uh, it's not as bad as what they predicted in fact be an ideal temperature to paint in right now if it wasn't blowing a gale and you know it's not not blowing a gale right this second but give it a minute or two and a big gust will come ripping through and uh, I can't I mean, the last hour or so, it's just been really howling. It's eased up a little bit. I'll go and look at weather, but I don't think I'm going to be spraying. Let me show you. I did get some things in the mail, and I, I haven't opened it yet. It's sitting out in the sun. I'll show you what I got. That's It's been sunny most of the day, and that's been out here, and I've been rotating it at every hour or so. So I don't think there's any coronavirus surviving on it. They say it can live on cardboard up to 24 hours or paper. But the sun, they say, kills it pretty rapidly. So it's had plenty of sun on all three major sides, and I've turned it end to end. And, and uh, so I'm going to open that up. That is the supposedly the rubber for the windows. So when I get the car painted and the other door done, I can put the glass back in and start really putting the car back together. So let me uh, take it in the garage and we'll open it up. This is the window. This is what goes on the molding that goes on the outer body. That's the weather seal between the glass and the molding. So I got, these are the doors. These are the rear quarter panels. These go on the inner panels between the, the glass and the door panel or inner panel. That's where the wing window would go right in, in here. And it comes with not only all this stuff, 
This is pretty awesome. It's a pretty nice kit. It comes with, um, this is from Auto Crafters, by the way. It comes with all uh, everything to install it. I'm, I'm impressed. It's actually a pretty nice kit for reproduction. And I was spending the money. I ordered this stuff almost eight weeks ago, and they said four weeks. And I haven't even bothered calling them to see where it was because I figured it had something to do with the coronavirus. I'm actually flabbergasted it came. And uh, I didn't think I'd see it for another month or so. But I also ordered these. So if you look in my videos, the hubcaps, the center plastic inserts are really beat up. So I got a new set of inserts for all the wheel covers. So I'll polish up the covers and put new inserts in them. And uh, yes, I am going with the original wheels. They're 15 inch. I'm going to put, eventually put white wall, the correct size white wall in a steel belted radial. Tyler sent me a link from Amazon through hand cooked tires and I actually have them on the truck. They came on the truck new. And I've really liked them. They're, they're, uh, does it say what they are? Anyway, I, I have to say they came on the truck new, and when I bought new tires, I was so happy with them, I bought another set of them. I've always had Michelins in the past, so I've had other brands and not had luck with them. I've always had good luck with Michelins, so that's why I always bought them. But these are good tires. I'm impressed with them. So, yeah, I would consider a set of them for the Galaxy with the right size white wall and the right size tire. The tires that are on the car, there, you can see that. I don't know if how beat up it shows there or not, but anyway, yeah, it's pretty beat up. But these tires are are not the right, correct size for the car. They're too, they're, they're about an inch too short. Should be a little taller tire. So I will get the tires to correct that when I put white walls on it. Yeah, flower stuff is even blowing all the way up to the, you know, to this end of the garage from the wind. I mean, it's just, I had that door open and that door open for about 10 minutes just aired out after I wiped it down with solvent. And the debris that blew through here was nuts and I blew the garage out really good closed the doors and then wiped everything down and uh, I'll tack it obviously before I spray it but I'm just gonna avoid the garage so I don't get any you know anything on the panels before I paint them I'm just gonna close the doors up and lock the garage and and uh, we'll just let it sit here till it's in green paint well, I guess I need to go wash my hands after handling those boxes and stuff. So I'll go do that. I'm going to take them in the house and set them in there so they don't get damaged until I need them. And uh, I'm going to wrap this video up, edit it, and put it up. You know, it's going to be a short video, but at least you get a picture of what I'm doing. And I'll put a video up as soon as I get it painted. Sounds like tomorrow's going to be really cold. And Saturday's going to be really nasty and cold. It sounds like maybe... Monday or Tuesday will be the soonest I'll be able to do some painting. But as soon as I do, I'll put a video up. I doubt I'll put any videos up until then because I'm not going to be doing anything on the car. It's just going to be sitting here waiting, playing the waiting game on the weather, you know, when you're doing it in your two-car garage. Sometimes you got to play with, you know, around the weather. If I had a proper spray booth and a body shop, yeah, I could, I could paint it right now. But... That's not the case. So that's why it's going to sit here for a couple of days. Well, if you like the video, definitely hit the like button, share the video. Anything helps, you know, will make me some money to maybe put a convertible top on it when I'm done. And uh, if you want to see this all painted up and finished, subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.